For the past eight months, I've been uploading videos on YouTube on a weekly basis. In that time, I've learned an enormous amount of information in regard to editing videos, creating thumbnails, filming nice looking shots, and all doing so while staying on a tight budget. In spite of said tight budget, I'd like to think my videos have come a long way in how enjoyable they are to watch for any given member of my audience. To better understand why I do what I do these days, I'll have to rewind the clocks back to when I first started making videos for this channel on a relatively consistent basis. Back then, I knew very little about what it meant to make a high quality review of an elegant product like an iPhone. In spite of this lack of understanding, I really applied myself. I wrote a script, got some lamps for better lighting, cleaned off my table, and got a camera stand we had for taking pictures. Then I recorded the audio on a microphone my friend gave me and edited the video. From there, I uploaded it. All in all, the whole process took around maybe two days and it was both mentally and physically exhausting but I was really proud and excited to see my work however it would seem both my excitement and effort was in vain as with that lack of knowledge I mentioned earlier the end result was a grainy video that was vaguely on topic and didn't add much to the consumers understanding of any given product you may be thinking wow that sounds like a complete failure and yeah you'd be exactly right this lack of understanding caused a lot of failure and while that likely sounds objectively like a negative it truly is a precious thing failure that is as over the past eight months the various failures of my early videos taught me invaluable lessons that i remember every single time i make a new video for this channel so i made one bad video failed, learned my lesson, and all my videos since then have been perfect, right? Obviously not. In fact, with the rate at which my videos were improving, it could oftentimes be painfully slow. It even felt like I wasn't getting anywhere at certain points. Like, if you watch these two videos side by side, they essentially look the same. However, if you get one of my more recent videos and put it side by side one of my older videos, you can really appreciate the progress I've made. It's just a matter of time. And that brings us to now. I'm making this video so you can avoid as much of that low quality failure as possible. Foremost and arguably the most important, a good camera is essential to any high quality video. In the day and age of creators like Linus Tech Tips, casually buying several cameras that cost over $12,000 a piece or MKBHD using a camera that costs as much as a new luxury car, it can start to feel like you don't stand a chance if you're on a budget. Don't worry, in the day and age of almost all smartphones being able to record in 4K, I'd argue buying a used iPhone or trading your current phone in for a newer one will get you the camera quality that can compete with giant YouTubers like Linus Tech Tips and NKBHD if you know what you're doing, and that's the key. Personally, I use the iPhone 12 Pro. I record everything in 4K at 60 FPS and use a mix of the 1X and 2X lenses. Then, I strongly recommend getting a clean white table to record your videos on. You can find one at Ikea for $30 like I have. However, if you're unable to get one of those, try using a cutting board. I use one for the reviews of the smaller products I bought, like an Apple Watch, and I'm really happy with how well it looks, especially with a 2x camera. However, if you're unable to get either of those, I'd recommend going outside and filming your shoots of your products on a sunny day. This will allow you to get some beautiful shots, adding a level of professionalism to your videos that costs you absolutely nothing. Speaking of lighting, if it fits within the budget, I strongly recommend getting a solid lighting setup as that's what made the biggest difference in the quality of my videos. Amazon has consistently had good deals on all kinds of lights, and I recommend getting a mono setup like I have. Unfortunately, the setup I bought isn't available in the configuration I have, but they do offer a three-piece setup that is relatively expensive, but if it's within your budget, I'd strongly recommend getting it. However, if you cannot buy lights, try finding any array of lamps around your house and make sure all the lights in your room work. This is very important as even one light bulb out can completely change the mood of a shot and be sure to keep a window open. Lighting is especially important in close up shots. Next, a camera stand is really important, and I was originally going to put it a lot higher on the list of importance, but with the recent improvements in image stabilization technology, it's arguably not as important as good lighting. However, it still will vastly increase the quality of your videos. I originally had a cheap camera stand for taking pictures, but when I tried getting panning shots, it would click as it didn't have a fluid head. So I bought a camera stand from Kingjoy that is much smoother and allows me to turn my camera at a steady rate. It's not perfect, but it definitely will suffice for now. Amazon has lots of relatively cheap options, just be sure to get one with a fluid head. Then to record the audio for my videos, I was fortunate enough to be given a microphone by a friend that had the branding wiped off so I don't even know what type it is, but in combination with the Yeti Blue Compass, it serves its purpose really well and has allowed me to voice over all my videos with a good quality microphone. However, if you're on a tight budget, I'd strongly recommend using your phone's onboard microphone and record yourself 
reading a script. This will give you the audio that can be edited in post to sound much better quality than it really is. However, if you really want good sound quality, Amazon has lots of cheap microphone options, or even if you have one of the newer MacBooks, their studio microphones are truly amazing and you could record voiceovers with just the microphone on your computer. And finally, to edit my videos, I use the free version of DaVinci Resolve. And anytime I don't know how to do something, I just look it up on YouTube. So the editing software and the tutorials are entirely free of any cost. And last but not least, I strongly recommend writing scripts as they can add a level of professionalism to your videos. And sometimes they can be a bit of a challenge to write, but for me, it's just improved with time. So you just have to get a lot of practice in. So all in all, not including my phone, my whole filmmaking setup costs less than $200, which is still definitely a lot of money. But in the day and age of professional camera stands costing well over $1,000, I'd say less than $200 is one heck of a deal for a studio setup that gives near professional quality. And thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing as only 2% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed. And as a small creator, any support really does help.